We've had a lot of discussion thus far about uh, mandated cost uh, and, and how we, we projected those and, and the problems we've had projecting those. My concerns are, are certainly going forward are, you know, you've had a lot of discussions about the demographics and everything that's going on is, are these numbers right going forward? Are, are, have we stopped this train from going down the tracks? Uh, I, I am hopeful that, that with all the information that you have, that you at least feel we are, the numbers that we're gonna project going forward are not gonna be in the same situation. I wish I knew that. I wish I could pro project the future. Unfortunately, I, I can't. And I think this is um, our growing senior population, I think, is is a reality that we're, we're going to have to face year after year. Um, I think when you look at our CHC, or I'm sorry, our, our capitation line, I think we, we have done a better job historically of projecting those costs out because it's a more mature program. Yeah. Community health choices is new. Um, and again, we've got the demographic and, issues. And, so and I, I understand that. I just hope that we start building some buffers or something that we can find some way, not even buffers, but actual numbers, real numbers. Uh, it, it's year after year after year we've had these supplementals and and we just have to stop and I, I but I didn't I didn't want to really talk about that I really wanted didn't want to talk about mandated costs I wanted to talk about managed cost because I had heard I had heard you mention mention things of cost containment and things like that and we've had prior discussions ourselves over performance based budgeting metrics where we had talked about uh, uh, preventable emissions and you had mentioned that early to Representative Griner and I know we had discussions about a $43 million preventable emission audit that uh, the, the federal government had done. Uh, but other preventable, other managed costs that we can deal with, I wanted to talk about. Uh, we're also in, in the employment arena. Uh, you had a uh, you have, uh, in your written testimony, you have information on DHS's education, training, and workforce development programs, specifically with EARN. And in your written testimony, you said 50% of individuals re refer to EARN don't enroll in the program. And, and, and data shows that only 4.5% of people in EARN <clears throat> were still there. And we're still in that job after six months. So how do you pay the vendors? Uh, what's, a, what's it based on? Uh, can we hold them accountable? These are managed costs. Mm -hmm. So actually, thank you for that question. We are in the process of completely redesigning our employment and training programs because I think when you, all of the data you just um, provided, that's exactly the reason we need to completely redo this. So we have had historically a, a work first approach. So when someone comes in, our vendors, the way we base their performance metrics, to your point about sort of how are we paying them and what are we looking for, we have been looking for them to just get somebody into a job. We didn't really care how much the job paid. We didn't care if that was gonna get somebody to long-term kind of sustainability and, and long-term ability for them to support themselves and their families. We just wanted them to get into a job. And I've had the opportunity opportunity to sit down with a lot of these clients and this is a population that is also desperate to work and so I think those two things have contributed to us really focusing on just getting somebody into a job and what we found is people aren't staying in those jobs if they get in the job and they're coming back 50% of them are coming back within a year so we are starting in July completely redoing our contracts so we are looking at how do we incentivize people and our vendors in particular to help people get into an education or training program that might help increase their wages and really just redesign the program to help address barriers on the front end. Because if we don't address barriers on the front end and get somebody into a job, no wonder they're not gonna be in that job a few years or a few months down and, the road. And, and I would, not to interrupt, but I did, did wanna follow through because I do appreciate what you're saying and, and I agree with you. And when you really get down to the numbers and you're talking about managing costs, it, it's somewhat scary also from my, from my perspective when and looking at numbers, I have uh, a uh, in 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 the activity of employment in the performance based budgeting uh, hearing. We we heard about uh, ninety seven thousand dollars per person for every full time employee in, in that arena, and and which is fine. You know, when you're counting uh, salaries and benefits like that, I, I can see the reality. But what are we getting for that money? Uh, and we we spend we spend an average cost of service. Per participant in employment arena, we spend $19,000 for each individual. That's what we're spending per individual to help them in job assistance. And if they're not doing jobs or they're leaving them, are, are we spending money wisely? Like I said, we've had a lot of discussions about mandated costs. These are managed costs. These are ones that you can't control. And, and our end result, and our end result in, in, in this, in using like a, a TANF work participation rate, uh, I believe we rank 
39th in the country in, in, in that arena. So our, our, our results, our outcomes, which you had mentioned earlier, aren't where we need to be. So I'm glad to hear that you are challenging this. And, and hopefully you will be coming back to us with some results of how we're going to do this better. Uh, well, we are implementing a different program uh, now and beginning in the middle of this year. So I hope to have some outcomes data not long after that. 